Well, turning to the president's executive overreach, our first guest is a co-sponsor of the Enforce the Law Act. He is saying that we cannot allow the president or any president to ignore the constitutional limits of executive power. Are we doing precisely that? Joining us now is Congressman Bob Goodluck. He is the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Congressman, it's great to have you with us. And I would just say to you first, uh, you just passed the Enforce the Law Act, and the president uh, and the attorney general today in, in admonishing federal prosecutors not to prosecute drug offenders, or at least some of them, uh, sort of thumbing their noses uh, at, at the Congress here today, are they not? Uh, they are. Uh, they did it twice today, uh, not only uh, with the uh, decision that's upcoming by the U.S. Sentencing Commission, the Attorney General announced, well, they, we think they're going to lower uh, the penalties for a number of drug offenses, so we're going to start uh, implementing that before they change the law. But the law says the Sentencing Commission makes this decision, and then there's a period of several months when the Congress has the opportunity to look at what the Sentencing Commission has done and say, yes, we agree with that, or no, we disagree. He's not even going to wait on that. He's going to put it into effect now clearly usurping the authority of the Congress on that issue uh, and did the same thing today uh, on the issue of uh, the sequestration, the question of whether or not the sequestration, the cut, the 7% across the board cut, applies to Obamacare subsidies. First they said it didn't, uh, it did, now they say it doesn't. That's uh, going to be a 500 uh, uh, million dollar diversion that's going to have to be taken from other areas of the budget in order to do what the president wants to do and he doesn't have the authority to do it under the law. Mr. Chairman, what you are describing is frankly an executive branch that is not involved in checks and balances uh, in, in, in any way making a decision unilaterally as to what will be in a law that was passed by the Congress uh, not worrying about the, the, the code, not worrying about the text, the intent, but straightforwardly deciding that the president will arbitrate and decide what the law is. Exactly right. And, you know, Senator Obama, as you know, on a number of occasions criticized the Bush administration uh, for doing just that and saying that if he were president of the United States, the three co-equal branches of government, the executive, the legislative, and the judicial, would all be treated that way and the separation of powers would be preserved. But he has done far from it. In fact, he's gone way beyond any previous president in terms of taking uh, areas of the law, whether it be drug enforcement, whether it be spending, whether it be uh, immigration law, whether it be uh, our environmental laws. The list goes on and on of areas where the president has simply taken the law into his own hands and decided to enforce uh, or not enforce uh, the law or rewrite the law, as he's done repeatedly with Obamacare. And. And the reality here is that there is seemingly no remedy, that there is no standing. Your own uh, Enforce the Law Act requires the support, uh, obviously, in passage of the Senate. Uh, that's, a, that's certainly in question. And it would require the president to sign it, but more to the point, he's already threatened to veto it. So what remedy is available to the House of Representatives uh, and one would think the Senate, even though it's controlled by the Democratic Party, that there would be no stomach to permit any presidency uh, to reach this level of imperiousness. Well, it's very disappointing that the Democrats in the Senate and most of them in the House won't stand up and protect the people's institution, uh, the legislative branch of our government, which in Article One of the Constitution is empowered to write the law. The president in Article Two uh, is required to faithfully execute the law. And clearly that's not happening. But we saw a glimmer of uh, hope in our hearings when a, uh, a liberal supporter of Barack Obama voted for him. Uh, uh, Professor Jonathan Turley clearly pointed out that this is a violation of separation of powers. And in yesterday's vote on the Enforce the Law Act, Trey Gowdy's bill, five courageous Democrats stepped up and yes. voted to make it easier to sue the president. And today, uh, on the Faithfully Execute the Laws Act, which is a disclosure bill. All it requires is that the Attorney General and other government uh, officers 
tell us, tell the Congress when they're not going to enforce the law. 18 Democrats stood up for that one. So the public is starting to wake up. Elections are drawing nigh. And uh, that's one of the ways that uh, so, we can impose pressure. As you, as you, will, as you refer to those elections... Uh, are you saying that the Congress has no other resort here, no other remedy uh, we, than to wait to await elections? We can cut off funding. Uh, we can hold hearings. The Senate can hold up appointments, which they have done uh, sometimes, and we can take the president to court. We've done that successfully uh, under current law in a few cases, but in other cases we have found that the courts have said we don't want to get involved in those disputes. Right. We say they're political disputes. They're not political disputes. They're constitutional disputes about who has the power. Are we uh, at a constant... In a few are... cases we have done it, but we need more standing, and that's what these bills are designed to do. Mr. Chairman, are we headed straight into a constitutional crisis? Because, frankly, a lot of the American people uh, are getting uh, sick to their stomachs of what they're witnessing here. Because this is a president who has said out loud and clearly that the purpose of his executive actions and orders are to avoid the Congress of the United States. No other president, to my knowledge, has ever said that as the reason for taking those actions. He said uh, he has a, a pen and a cell phone. What we say is that we have the United States Constitution, and uh, we want to make sure... Uh, that uh, we're going to make sure that the people's constitution is protected. We're going to continue to pass legislation that moves us in that direction. We're going to continue to bring lawsuits when we think it's appropriate to do so. And we're going to win some of those, like we did with the recess appointments of the uh, National Labor Relations Board employees. And we're winning the lawsuit requiring the Attorney General uh, to turn over documents starting the mishandling of uh, Fast and Furious and possibly the cover-up of that as well. And uh, we'll continue to bring those lawsuits uh, as appropriate, but we need to have the courts exercise their responsibility in uh, stepping in and deciding these cases when it's a clear dispute as to who has the power under the Constitution. And if they will do that, that will help as well. Congressman Bob, good luck. Good to have you with us.